Yeah, good morning, students. Uh, this is the second class. Now, uh, just recall the previous topic which we have uh, discussed uh, yesterday. The first was, uh, you know, colligative properties, and in that we have seen that when a non-volatile solute, the so solid solute is added in the liquid solvent, then there are few properties which are changed. The first one was uh, that uh, relative lowering of the vapor pressure. And the second one is the elevation in the boiling point. You know that if you talk about the pure solvent, like uh, an example we can take that is uh, water, right? So the boiling point of the water is uh, 100 degrees Celsius. I'm talking of the pure distilled water, okay? Don't take that tap water or something like that. Is it fine? The pure distilled water, a uh, boiling temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. Fine, but when you add non-volatile solid solute and dissolve in it, then the te boiling temperature will be rise up. Is it fine? So from 100 degrees Celsius, it can reach to the 110 degrees Celsius or maybe 105 degrees Celsius. That is depending upon the quantity of the solid solute added in the water. Did you understand? So that increase in the boiling point from the pure solvent that is called as an elevation in the boiling point and this change is called as an ebulloscopy. Is it fine? So today's topic is elevation in the boiling point and we have to find out the the formula we have to derive the formula is it when will show the graphical representation of the elevation in the boiling point and the change in the vapor pressure okay students now come back so uh, as you know that we have classified two components the solution into the two components that is why by, it is called binary solution the first one is the solvent liquid solvent and the second one is a solid non-volatile solute is it fine and now there are variables which I have taken. The one is mass. Mass, solvent mass is W1 and solute mass is W2. Now, molar mass that is M1 and its molar mass is M2. Number of moles solvent is N1 and number of moles of the solute will be taken as N2. Is it fine? Now, this is most important part. The boiling, uh, boiling point of the pure component. The boiling point of the pure component. Which component I am talking about? That solvent part. The boiling point of this solvent part it is liquid in the nature so it, it will be taken as a TV naught. Yesterday we have taken P1 naught. What was the meaning of the P1 naught? P1 naught meaning was the vapor pressure in the purest form of a solvent liquid, a yeah, liquid solvent we can say. Is it fine? The same thing here TV naught means what? The boiling point of the pure component and which component I am talking about? This is the solvent component which is liquid in the nature. Understood this thing? We are not taking any variable here. Is it not because we are not supposed to find out any kind of the boiling point of the solid solute. I hope you all clear with this. Now when you combine these two components then the solution is produced. Now what will be the solution boiling temperature? This is the TB. So pure one is a TB naught and after mixing of it the boiling temperature rises up, up and that is called as a TB. So you people know that the solvent boiling temperature was low pure solvent boiling temperature was low and the boiling temperature of the solution has risen up so this is higher and this is lower so if you want to find out the change in the boiling point so this change in the boiling point is called as an elevation in the boiling point the elevation in boiling point will be taken as delta tb variable i hope you understood so this is the delta tb delta tb means what elevation in the boiling point or the change in the boiling point after mixing of the solid solute in the solvent understood this thing better okay so here you know that tb is greater than tb naught why TB? Because it is the boiling temperature of the solution and TB0 is the boiling temperature of the pure solvent. Understood? So here it is, uh, it, this one is greater than this one. Now substitute this thing here. We can say that uh, delta TB is equal to TB minus TB0 because this is the change in the boiling temperature. So delta TB is greater and TB0 is uh, lesser. So we will uh, find out the differentiation between difference between them. So delta TB minus TB0. Okay. I, I hope this point is clear. Now, till here, that is, we know that how the change in temperature is there. Now, come to this one. You know that I told you that um, uh, the boiling temperature depends upon the quantity of the solute added. And quantity can be taken in terms of the mass. It can be taken in terms of the concentrations. It can be taken as a number of moles, mole fraction, etc. So, concentration can be of molarity and the molality. But here, we will talk about the molality. Because this is depending upon the molality of the solvent. Yeah, molality of the solution, not the solvent, molality of the solution. Is it fine? So here we can say that delta TB, that means elevation in the boiling point is directly proportional to the molality. More is the molality of the solution, 
boiling point temperature variation will also be more is it fine so here we can say that delta tb is equal to small m because molality is denoted by small m i hope you understood students okay so now what is molality you people have seen in the and at the at the starting of the chapter that molality means number of moles of the solute divided by mass of the solvent in kilogram that i have written the formula molality is equal to number of moles of the solute which can be taken as n2 because n2 i have taken this variable here so n2 and mass of the solvent in the kilogram so this is the mass of the solvent that means w1 w1 is a mass of the solvent in kilogram is it clear student so this is the molality now substitute this thing here at this point okay so delta tb delta tb directly proportional directly proportional molality instead of molality i have substituted this value n2 divided by n uh, w1 in kilogram i hope you understood now when we remove this proportionality sign what comes a constant is it fine so we have uh, uh, you know taken a constant and what constant is delta tb is equal to kb kb what is kb kb is called as a molal elevation boiling point constant ya molal elevation constant ya elevation boiling point constant or it is also known as a ebulloscopic constant ebulloscopic means rise in the temperature due to the rise in temperature what happens uh, uh, the difference is there that is called as a ebulloscopic constant i hope you understood this thing so delta tb is equal to kb dot their dot means multiplication and n2 divided by w1 and this w1 should be in the kilogram is it fine that w1 should be in the kilogram i hope you all understood this thing okay now what is the value of n2 n2 is number of moles of the solute the number of moles of the solute is equal to w2 divided by m2 any given mass upon molar mass of the solute is it fine now substitute this n2's value here so what formula we get delta tb delta tb kb kb is it fine and instead of n2 we substitute w2 divided by m2 the w2 divided by m2 and this w1 in kilogram i have taken in this so this is the elevation in the boiling point or ebulloscopy is it fine and formula will be kb into w2 and kb is the ebulloscopic constant w2 is the mass of the solvent sorry solute in the uh, whatever the gram is there now m2 is there that is a mol molar mass of the solute okay and w1 is the mass of the solvent in kilogram is it fine and m2 we we take out this formula in terms of the molarity sorry uh, uh, molar mass not molarity in terms of the molar mass the molar mass is equal to this will be the value i hope you understood this thing so this is the formula for the elevation boiling point and calculation of the molar molar mass of the solute understood this thing now if you show this thing on the graph what happened so there is a graph between the vapor pressure and the temperature right you know that uh, there is a boiling temperature and the uh, formation of the vapor will also be uh, related with each other so i have made one graph here which will show uh, that how the vapor pressure will be changed or how the temperature is responsible for the change in the vapor so this is the vapor pressure x axis or this is the temperature it can be taken as y axis is it fine or it can be x or y is it clear so now this graph shows this is the boiling point the point which i have shown here this is the boiling point of the solvent which will be larger sorry which uh, see uh, boiling point of the solvent which will be smaller not larger which will be the smaller or the less so the boiling temperature will be coming here that is a tb not is it fine now solution this is the second graph for the solution why i have taken low at the at the lower side because the vapor pressure has been decreased is it fine because when you add the non volatile solute in that vapors will be lesser in the volume is it fine so the graph will be going down so this is the boiling temperature of the solution and this boiling temperature is coming here this is the tb and the difference between them this will be taken as tb minus tb not so this will be taken as delta tb okay so this is the uh, elevation in the boiling point now come to the vapor pressure so the vapor pressure of the pure solvent were maximum and vapor pressure of the solution was lower so difference in them that will be taken as a delta t sorry delta p delta p is what what is delta p that is the uh, uh, change in the vapor pressure or relative lowering of the vapor pressure is it fine so two things can be can be found out by using this graph i hope you all understood this thing okay now the third type of the colligative property that was there is a difference in the freezing point you know that uh, if you take the pure solvent like water the freezing temperature is 0 degree celsius or 273.15 kelvin now in the same water if you add two teaspoonful of the common salt 
then what will be the freezing point? It will remain same. Answer is no. Is it fine? Why is it so? Because the new force of attraction generated between the solid and the sorry, solid sol solute and the solvent. Is it fine? So this force of interaction is responsible for the decrease in the freezing temperature. So initially pure solvent freezing temperature was 0 degree Celsius say for the water but after addition of the non-volatile solid solute the freezing temperature reaches to the minus, minus something degree Celsius say minus 10, minus 20 whatever it depends upon the amount of the solid solute added in, the, in, in it. Is it fine students? So this the change in the freezing point is called as a depression in the freezing point that means the freezing point decreased okay from 0 degree celsius to the minus is it fine in case of the water is it fine and this phenomena is called as a cryoscopy what is this called as cryoscopy so we will descri uh, describe the cryoscopy now the same thing is that binary, sol binary solution one is a solvent this is the solute the same thing which I have added in the previous I have taught you in the previous uh, uh, colligative property mass of the sol solvent is uh, W1 and solute is W2 mass of, molar mass of the solvent is M1 and solute is M2 number of moles N1 and number of moles N2 freezing point of the pure component in the previous part I have taken the boiling temperature of the pure component but here I am taking the freezing point of the pure component that will be taken as Tf0 so wherever the not 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 is there is it fine like uh, P1 not Tb not Tf0 these all are are for the uh, pure component pure component any pure solvent is it fine students is it fine so let's see that here will not describe anything freezing point okay when you combine them together when we get the solution and the freezing point of the solution will be taken as a tf is it fine in the previous case it was tb but now it is a tf and you know that the zero degree celsius was maximum and minus was minimum okay so we have to uh, find out the difference okay by uh, subtracting the lower from the 0 degree Celsius that means T, uh, Tf0 minus Tf so I have taken this thing uh, depression in the freezing point will be taken as delta Tf that is a change in the freezing temperature so here we know that Tf0 any uh, freezing point of the pure solvent will be maximum and the freezing point of the solution is lesser yeah minimum understood this thing so maximum minus minimum we between maximum minus minimum so this is the difference between them okay so this is the first part over now you know that freezing temperature depends upon the amount of the solid solute and added in that and I told you that it depends upon the concentration. So concentration I have taken in terms of the molality. So delta Tf is again directly proportional to the molality. Delta Tf is directly proportional to the small m. Small m what? Molality. Again the same thing you can see that. Molality is equal to number of moles of the solute divided by the mass of the solvent in kilogram and molality denoted by small m and n2 divided by w1 n2 is the number of moles of the solute and w1 is the mass of the solvent in the kilogram now substitute this value in this formula so delta tf is directly proportional to n2 divided by w1 in kilogram is it fine so when you remove this proportionality sign we get a constant this initially uh, sorry in the previous case it was kb but now it is a kf so delta tf is equal to kf n2 divided by uh, w1 in kilograms so kf is called as a molar depression freezing point constant okay or it is also known as a cryoscopic constant is it fine yeah molar depression constant sometimes it is also called as a molar depression constant i hope you understood this thing so kf is taken in that way so now when we remove this thing uh, a proportionality sign we get the kf okay now the total formula will be what when you substitute the value of m2 also like w2 divided by m2 then what will be the total formula delta tf depression in the freezing point is equal to kf what is that cryoscopic constant multiplied by the mass of the solute is it fine divided by molar mass of the solute into mass of the solvent in kilogram is it fine this is in terms of the depression in the freezing point and now in terms of the molar mass of the solute the formula will be changed is it fine we have to just shift the variables so that we can get the molar mass of it so there can be two type of the molar mass the one is the observed molar mass like observed, observed molar mass can be calculated by simply addition and multiplication of the uh, number of uh, atoms present in the formula say uh, you, you can say like, uh, like CH4 okay so C is 1 into 12 or plus 4 into 1 so total will be 12 plus 4 how many it is that 16 unit or 16 gram, gram per mole so this is the observed molar mass is it fine but if you 
substitute the values here okay of the different variables and if you get the molar mass here this will be called as a calculated molar mass so there can be a difference in them the observed molar mass and the calculated molar mass so there could be a difference between them is it fine well, this difference we will calculate later on now come to the graphical representation of the depression in the freezing point or the cryoscopy the same thing is that vapor pressure and the temperature now the graph the first graph the blue color line this is the liquid solvent okay and we need to find out the freezing point so this freezing point will be calculated here this will be taken as a tf not because this is the pure solvent pure solvent uh, freezing temperature is tf not so i have taken this part and i told you that if you made make the solution then freezing point decreases so freezing point decreases and it will reach into the towards the zero side so the freezing point of the solution is here and we found out this is the point where the uh, 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 graph is meeting is it fine this temperature is called as a tf understood the thing so the difference in them tf not minus tf will be taken as delta tf understood the vapor pressure at this particular temperature what will be the vapor pressure this will be the vapor pressure of the pure solvent and at this temperature the vapor pressure will be taken as a solution uh, vapor pressure of the solution and the difference between the vapor pressure is taken as delta t so delta p can also be calculated delta tf can also be calculated so this is called as a cryoscopy this is the third colligative property so total three colligative properties we studied the first one was a relative lowering of the vapor pressure that was calculated by delta p second one is a elevation in the boiling point that was calculated by delta tf sorry tv and the third one is your depression in the freezing point it can be calculated as a delta tf i hope you all understood this thing okay now fourth colligative properties there okay we will discuss tomorrow